Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Wednesday evening, September 12th. Still watching dangerous Hurricane Florence moving northwestward toward the North Carolina coastline. Impacts expected to reach the coast as soon as tomorrow morning. Here's the current visible satellite shot over the last couple of hours showing a very large circulation and continuing to get larger. This is the primary danger of Florence at the moment. If we look at the core here, we'll notice that the eye continues to struggle to clear out. There are a lot of clouds in the middle. This indicates some disruption of the inner core continuing to occur. You can see some semblance of a wrapping eyewall here in the clouds that is not quite closed. What we also see is evidence of several spiral bands to the outside of the primary eyewall as well. And this is symptomatic of a very large storm, which we do have, and we can see this in the microwave pass as well from about three hours ago, showing the eye here with only a fragment of a well-defined inner eyewall in this particular pass with a couple of bands around it to the outside. And this is indicating that uh, the storm is struggling to organize an inner core in a perfect way. You can also see that there's not much going on on the southern side, indicating some continuing southerly shear that has sort of stuck around and not gone away yet. But even without the shear there, these larger storms tend to struggle a bit to attain their maximum possible intensity. For example, Florence would struggle to ever attain Category 5 strength, simply because when you have a very large circulation in lots of outer bands like this, it tends to prevent a low level inflow coming in toward the center of the storm from really a getting there in an organized way and defining the eye wall in the optimal fashion because you have all these outer bands sort of in the way if you will to the outside of the eye wall and this typically uh, makes it difficult for the inner core to stay uh, in an organized state in addition when you have wind shear out of the south like this you can see some of these anvil clouds right here drifting in the northerly direction indicating some flow pushing on the southern side that can push some dry air in into the core and we may be seeing that right here getting into the core and wrapping in a little bit and disrupting the eye wall from time to time. We can also look at a drop sound uh, that was released somewhere in this area by a G4 aircraft earlier this afternoon and if we look at that drop sound uh, what this shows is you're going uh, the altitude goes up as you look upward on the plot and we can see the temperature in red dew point in green where these are highly separated indicates a lot of dry air above about the 400 millibar level and we can see the wind shear denoted by south or south southwesterly winds at about the 250 millibar level. This is important because dry air high up can get entrained into the storm easier because uh, hurricane circulation is weaker way up at this level and when the circulation is weaker it's easier to punch dry air into it. So as we look at this that's what we're seeing here. It's disrupting the storm just a little bit but don't get too caught up in the exact intensity of Florence because although the winds may fluctuate just a little bit before landfall it's going to be a major hurricane regardless, and the size of the storm is the problem, because when you have a circulation this large, tropical storm force winds out to 200 miles from the center, especially on this side here, you get a ton of water pushed toward the coast to the right of the landfall point, and that is by far the most life-threatening hazard is the storm surge as ocean water is pushed ashore, especially since Florence is likely to stall and push water onshore for a long period of time, and the long exposure uh, due to the circulation size to wind because if the circulation is moving slowly and it's large you might be in hurricane or tropical storm conditions for a day plus in some of these areas of the Carolinas. All right so here's the water vapor loop showing uh, the storm continuing to move in this direction. We have seen it move just a little bit to the right of where it's expected to be. Most models had it maybe about here uh, in a few hours, but it's moving just to the right of that. It will likely take a subtle bend back toward the left here as it nears North Carolina. As we see this upper low east of Florida is moving this way and will sort of help to pinwheel the hurricane around just a tad, very subtly. This is also what's helping to force the wind shear in from the south, rotating around this low, by the way. Uh, so this will uh, approach the North Carolina coast and we still have high confidence in this track generally toward the coast. Now where it gets tricky is right when it starts to arrive. First of all I'll mention that you can see that the cloud shield is already extending way out ahead of this and by tomorrow morning will already be reaching the coast even if the eye doesn't get there for even a full day later. So impacts will begin tomorrow. Today is the last day for preparations before dangerous weather begins. Uh, so the problem now uh, on the model forecast here, just as an example, this is the GFS 500 millibar chart, is right here. So this is 24 hours from now. This is Thursday afternoon, about 2 p.m. Eastern time. The center will be getting close to the coast by this point. 
And again, we have this ridge to its east trying to steer the storm northwestward into the coast. But what's happening is we have another ridge that's hard to see here, but I'll outline it over Tennessee that has flow out of the opposite direction trying to resist and pull the storm south. So these two flows are competing. This one is weakening because there's this shortwave trough right here diving down into this ridge, weakening it, destroying the steering flow out of the south, and therefore allowing this ridge to win, if you will, and, uh, and stop this storm in its tracks somewhere. And it is going to slow down dramatically as it nears the coast. The key is where does it stall? On this particular model, what happens is you'll see this short wave come down here. You'll see this ridge weaken. And so you can see the system has barely moved. This is a 24 hour difference here. And you can see it's now moved west northwest only on shore, just barely northwest of Wilmington. And again, the short wave will continue to come down 24 hours later. You can now see it bending west southwest in the model as this ridge is completely gone and the northeast flow on the back side of this short wave is now kicking this inland a bit and maybe toward the southwest a tad and this is only one model this track is not exact and there is uncertainty here because the models are still struggling with this this short wave how uh, fast it erodes this ridge and how fast Florence moves precisely near the coast will matter a lot because this stall could occur just inland and then a slow drift westward and eventually a turn north, in which case the storm would weaken rapidly but bring tremendous rainfall and continued surge to the coast, or the storm could stall just offshore, in which case it would still weaken but a little bit more slowly and so you'd have much more prolonged surge and wind perhaps over a large section of coastline. In addition, if it stalls offshore, it may drift west-southwest enough to actually make a landfall in South Carolina instead of North Carolina. So there's actually a rather large segment of coastline that we need to watch for the potential of direct impacts from the eye of Florence. But regardless of the exact landfall point, most of North Carolina is likely to get a very high storm surge over 10 feet in places as this wind piles up ocean water for potentially more than one day and multiple high tide cycles. So this is very dangerous. If you live in an evacuation zone and you've been told to leave, please do so. This is absolutely no joke, this storm. So here's the official forecast, and this generally showing this idea that it approaches the North Carolina coast somewhere and starts moving very slowly. You can see by tomorrow afternoon, 2 p.m. Thursday, this is where the center is, but look at the size of this wind field. In orange here is winds greater than 40 miles per hour. In red, winds greater than 75 miles per hour. Translate this even to Thursday afternoon, and you already have dangerous winds moving ashore. And again, to near and to the right of the track, all this wind on the right-hand side will be pushing storm surge ashore. Uh, so North Carolina will be taking a beating for a long time as this slows down. And the exact track of this eye, you know, look, there could be a range of locations where the eye wall and the worst winds try to come ashore. It could be anywhere really from areas like Moorhead City down to Wilmington. And again, the, the eye could stall just offshore and sneak down even into South Carolina. So that's why we have hurricane warnings all along this section of coastline. We know the wind field is big. You're going to get winds no matter where you are here from Charleston northeastward, most likely. The worst of the wind, the precise details of where that comes ashore, it, it's going to be a little hard to tell for now, but you got to be ready for it regardless of which uh, part of coastline you're on here. It's going to be bad pretty much in this whole area. It's just a question of just how bad in terms of the raw wind power. But storm surge and rainfall are going to be huge problems regardless of the exact track of the eye. We're expecting uh, rainfall totals potentially over 30 inches near the point of closest approach to North Carolina or landfall there where, uh, you know, multiple feet are going to fall over an area that a catastrophic flash flooding could result from. And uh, again, inland, uh, we'll see a lot of rain well away from the coast. This is not just a coastal event, and we could see flash flooding problems for most of the Carolinas, and you can see extending all the way into the southern Appalachians now. We've seen this rainfall forecast shift left as the forecast track has shifted left, and put potentially even into uh, northeastern Georgia as well, could see some uh, flooding potential depending on the exact path of the remnants as the storm drifts inland. 
So to recap the official forecast here, again, very large wind field will start arriving on the coastline sometime tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon. At this point, it starts to slow down a lot. As it approaches North Carolina, it becomes unclear exactly where the eye wall will start impacting the coast first. It could be as far north as Moorhead City in the Outer Banks. It could be as far southwest as Wilmington first. Exactly where the stall occurs, it could be over the water, could be over land. If it's over land, then the winds and the surge start to weaken a little bit faster but you still get very prolonged surge onto most of the North Carolina coastline to the right of the track. If it's offshore, your winds stay stronger for longer and your surge stays stronger for longer. And regardless of whether it's offshore or onshore, you get lots of flash flooding potential. For South Carolina, if it stays offshore while it stalls, then you might have a higher chance for hurricane force winds down toward Myrtle Beach and Charleston. It's going to depend on whether or not the eye gets ashore here first, in which case you get less wind, or if it stays offshore, then you get more. If you're worried down in Savannah, Georgia, you know, it's not really expected to come down that far south, but it's not completely outside the realm of possibility for this to stall and then do something really sharp to the left and get pretty close. It's not impossible. Just keep an eye on the forecast to see if there are any changes. Right now, it would still take a couple of days for that to happen, so there aren't even any watches out for you yet, but be prepared just in case, and if local officials start to get concerned about this, do listen to what they're saying and keep an eye on hurricanes.gov for the latest updates. And again, regardless of what happens at the coastline, line it's going to be an inland event too with all this slow movement you're going from thursday to the weekend sunday and it's barely moved at not even a couple hundred miles over a couple of days uh, during part of this track and that means a lot of rain falling over most of the carolinas into the appalachians spreading up into the mid-atlantic potentially as the remnants turn north and this could bring uh, the potential for flash flooding to a large swath of the country. If you hear earnestness in my voice, it's because it's deserved. This is a very dangerous storm, one of the worst that we've seen in this part of the Atlantic and likely in this part of the U.S. So please be safe and listen to uh, evacuation orders if they have been given to you. Take this seriously and take the proper precautions to protect life and property. All right, that's going to be it for my update for Florence today. We're going to talk briefly about the rest of the stuff going on in the Atlantic. We have a new tropical storm, Joyce, in the middle of the North Atlantic. That doesn't uh, really present a threat to land areas right now. We also have Helene, same story. Uh, we do have Isaac, uh, tropical storm Isaac, nearing the Lesser Antilles, and that will be impacting the islands tomorrow. This is the uh, close-up loop of that storm. Continues to be highly sheared with this well-defined uh, but exposed circulation thunderstorm activity confined to the east. You can see the islands popping up here. Here's Martinique, Dominica, Guadeloupe. This seems to be on a path that will take it right toward Dominica. Somewhere around there, there are tropical storm warnings for all three of these islands. Winds on the north side, despite no thunderstorms, remain about 60 miles per hour sustained. So this will be a blustery a day with uh, winds that strong and the potential for flash flooding as a rain falls on the islands. Here's the official forecast track showing uh, the quick movement westward again tomorrow during the day and perhaps through the evening bringing uh, showers and strong winds to these islands and then it's off into the Caribbean where the future of the storm is rather uncertain. This wind shear will remain around for a couple of days. It may destroy the storm in this area here uh, but it may also survive and the wind shear may decrease later down the road so we'll have to wait and see if the storm tries to uh, come up into this uh, part of the northwest Western Caribbean, a little unsure of Isaac's future. We'll talk more about that once we've got the storm past the islands. All right, we also have an area of disturbed weather, Invest 95L. It's been dubbed in the Gulf of Mexico. Here's uh, Louisiana and Texas up to the top left of your screen. We have this area of disturbed weather we've been tracking. There's a very weak area of sort of circulation. There's not much evidence of west winds, more like calm winds on the south side, but you do see north winds here and east winds here. And so there is a little bit of rotation trying to form. It's still entangled with an upper level trough over the central gulf, but as this moves northwest tomorrow, it is likely to experience a little bit of a more favorable environment. And it's possible that a tropical depression could form prior to moving ashore, currently expected uh, Corpus Christi southward, uh, somewhere between Corpus Christi and Brownsville 
it's expected to see this disturbance move ashore, it will likely run out of time uh, before getting a chance to become strong. So this is mostly a rainfall event for southern and central Texas and perhaps northern Mexico as well. So we'll just keep an eye on this. Right now, NHC gives a 70% chance of this becoming a tropical depression uh, before it runs out of time over water. And last but not least, we have Tropical Storm Olivia hitting uh, the uh, islands of Hawaii. Let me refresh this loop. It seems to stop every time. Uh, the storm did move down uh, toward the island chain, and you can see the center has already crossed over. It's uh, already made landfall and gone to the other side. Most of the rain uh, on the backside is now impacting these middle islands, and uh, the tropical storm warnings have been dropped for Kauai and the big islands, so it's only these three that now have tropical storm warnings. We could see gale force winds potentially throughout the rest of today, and uh, potentially some flash flooding if heavy rainfall occurs uh, on the back side of this due to some of this rain. Uh, but this will be moving on to the west-southwest and leaving the islands behind in fairly short order. All right, so that's the summary of the tropics today. Uh, again, watching primarily Florence, a historic hurricane coming for the southeastern U.S., potentially catastrophic storm surge and flash flooding due to rainfall. Remember, it's not all about the wind, but the wind will be bad as well near the point of landfall. And everyone, please stay safe as this approaches. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.